Hello, this is Ryan McGee with Cabarrus Health Alliance. In the next few days, we're going to be making some changes to the data dashboards uh, web page at the Cabarrus Health Alliance website. We're going to be discussing two websites today uh, because first we're going to look at our current website, CabarrusHealth.org, COVID data. And we're going to be looking at the North Carolina DHHS COVID-19 data dashboards. In the future, we're going to be embedding some North Carolina dashboards into the Cabarrus Health Alliance website. We're going to cover some of that right now. So today we're going to review the current dashboard. We're going to look at some data that is not in the new dashboard. We're going to talk about what the new data is going to look like. And again, that's at the state's website right now, but it will be on the CHA website in the future. We'll talk briefly about why we're making this change. We'll also, at the very end, talk about how you can act, calculate active cases uh, and some better ways to assess the current spread of COVID-19 in Cabarrus County. So first, we're going to look at the current dashboards. Uh, if you're frequenting our page, you're probably familiar with these current dashboards. Now we're going to switch over this is what the new dashboard will look like, and we're going to actually move to the North Carolina DHHS webpage to take a look at that. So this is the North Carolina ncdhhs.gov. Um, they have a COVID-19 webpage, uh, and they have a main data dashboard. When you get to that dashboard, there's a dashboard for cases, and this is where the dashboard exists right now that we're going to be putting on our website. By default on the state website, you're looking at cases for the entire state of North Carolina. But on our website, it's going to automatically filter for Cabarrus County data. So this trend, as you'll see, is very much like the trend that's on our current website. It shows you new cases each day. You can hover over and see that we had 79 new cases on November 10th. It also gives you a yellow line indicating a seven-day rolling average. Now, North Carolina gives you a lot of data that we don't have on our website. Um, primarily, there's data about deaths in Cabarrus County. So I'm going to switch over here. And you can see, actually, over time, we can see how many deaths per day at different points throughout the pandemic. Um, if we scroll down on this website, we have demographic data, very similar to what we've been having on our CHA website. Um, these data are the same cases. Uh, we actually get the information about new cases from the state. And when we do investigations, we share that additional information back with the state of North Carolina. So these are the same people, the same cases, the same data. Now, the state does divide some of these categories differently. Um, it's been a source of a lot of questions for people when they look at our website, why we don't do them exactly the same as the state. Uh, so one solution here, again, is to just use the state's dashboard so that we have the same data and there's just one common source of information for everyone. So again, we've got additional information. We can see cases by the date reported. We can see cases by the date the specimen was collected, and we can look at death data. And one additional really important thing about this dashboard is it includes antigen positive cases. So antigen testing is really starting to expand. These are rapid tests. Um, they're slightly different, and we have to treat the tests a little bit different. But we follow up with everyone who tests positive for COVID, regardless of whether they have a PCR test or an antigen test. But the important piece here is that the state has incorporated these tests into their dashboards. And we have not incorporated that into our current reporting. So as more and more people start using antigen testing, it'll be even more important to have this data included in our dashboards. Now I'm going to switch back to our PowerPoint. Now, there is some data that's not going to be in the new dashboard. Um, active cases, recovered, and hospitalized residents in Cabarrus County. I'm going to switch back to the browser for a brief moment and go back to the CHA website. So as I scroll down, you'll see we are going to keep this hospitalized in Cabarrus County dashboard. We think it's important for you to have this information. Um, because this is a vital resource to our community that can become overwhelmed um, as COVID cases rise. 
we also are going to keep this weekly testing dashboard that shows both the total number tested each week. So if, as you'll see here, we had 40, looks like 4,200, a very small picture on the screen, but about 4,200 people tested. It also has a line under here for the percent positive. So of those 4,200 people who were tested for COVID-19, 6.64% 6 at this last week to, um, were positive. So these two dashboards are staying. Again, the demographics dashboard and the cases dashboard are what are going to be leaving. As I mentioned, the state dashboard includes more information about cases. It includes information about those who have died that we can't share at the local level because of some privacy laws. It also includes data from antigen tests. Oh, and also the state dashboard is a bit more up to date. Um, they're sharing a little bit more up to date data because they get the data sooner than we do in some cases. Now, we're gonna switch back to that state dashboard and we're gonna talk really briefly because we are aware that lots of folks have been using this active case number as a way to track the spread in Cabarrus County. Now, in the early days of the pandemic, we were actively following up with every person in Cabarrus County who contracted COVID-19 from the beginning of their illness all the way until they recovered. But right about the same time we deployed these dashboards, cases went up so high that we don't have the resources to do that. And so just like the state used to do, we have been estimating the number of recovered by looking at people who got COVID in the last 14 days. So if they contracted COVID in the last two weeks, we consider them active. And after that time, we consider them recovered. Now, if you're looking at the state dashboard, you can see that this period of time right here toward the end is the last 14 days. And if you take that yellow line and go right in the middle, you can see that the average for the last 14 days is about 50 cases a day. And again, this is an estimate of active cases. Now, if you slide over to the left and you look at 50 cases per day, all you need to do is multiply 50 times 14 days. And you can estimate that we have 700 active cases in Cabarrus County. Now, I'm going to switch back over to our dashboard and I'm going to refresh. And you'll see we have 715 that we are estimating, again, based on people who have tested positive in the last 14 days. So again, if you just look at the last two weeks on the state dashboard, you figure out what the average of those two weeks are, and you multiply that by 14, you can estimate active cases. But I will say that there is a, a better way to assess the spread in Cabarrus County, and one that doesn't rely on looking at the last week. So obviously our trend is moving up. We are moving in the wrong direction right now, but we'd like to have some absolute number to compare against. And if we're going to do that, I'm going to share two numbers with you. Um, this is all based on the number of cases per 100,000, new cases per day per 100,000 people uh, in, this, in this county. So the ultimate goal, if we want testing and tracing to work, is to have less than 10 cases per 100,000 per day. So Cabarrus County conveniently has about 200,000 people. So that means our goal to really effectively manage COVID-19 with testing and tracing is to be below 20 new cases per day. And as you can see, we were below 20 until about June. And we have been over that number for quite a while now, between 20 and 50 cases is sort of the, we're starting to get out of control level. Testing and tracing that we do here at Cabarrus Health Alliance is less effective, um, and we may need to start considering other measures. So as you can see, for several months now, we've been in that range between 20 and 50 new cases per day, or between 10 and 25 new cases per 100,000 residents per day. Uh, unfortunately, this last week we have crossed over from 
that 20 to 50 range above, and we seem to still be heading up as we look at things right now. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation. As we said at the beginning, uh, we've looked at our CabarrasHealth.org website, uh, particularly the COVID data page, and we've also looked at the COVID-19 ncdhhs.gov dashboard. This is where you can find all this information, and we will be making these changes in the coming days. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. And please, we need everyone's help to do what you can to stop the spread of COVID-19. Please wear your mask. Please avoid interaction with other people when it's unnecessary. Uh, please keep your social distance, your six feet or more, um, and preferably have those interactions outside as opposed to prolonged, prolonged um, interactions with other people less than six feet away without a mask indoors is about the riskiest thing we can be doing. And right now, we are really struggling to contain the spread of COVID-19 in Cabarrus County. Well, thank you all for your help as we continue to do that.